in this part, we're going to be doing some math, so some arithmetic. And so let's first look at what kind of arithmetic operators there are. And here we have the standard plus minus multiplication. Here's an exponent operator. Not all languages even have that, right? A division, a modulus operator, and it has an increment and decrement operator. So, so, the, so lots of the basic mathematical operators. Uh, also has a variety of assignment operators, so the standard where you just do assignment, but it also has the plus assignment, the minus assignment, and here it shows you what that means, that it first does the subtraction and then does the assignment. And so lots of different um, assignment operators. Now, we're going to be doing some math. We'll be adding, and we'll use it math on numbers, but we're also going to use math on dates, which is kind of fun, right? So what we want to be able to do is count down how many days are left between the current day, which we're working with May 23rd, 2018, as that comes from the textbook, how many days are left until New Year's Eve, or till New Year's arrives, right? And then we'll do hours and minutes and seconds. But we're going to start here with figuring out how many days are left. So we're going to do a couple things to figure that out. So we're going to create a variable that is the new year date. And then we can work with that uh, to do some math between the dates to get the number of dates. So we'll call this new year and we'll set it equal to, we'll create a new date object and we'll set it to January. Remember we put this in the string, January 1, comma 2018 and we're choosing 2018 again this is temporary we're just setting it up so we match and then later we'll change it to the current date and time oops i didn't spell january quite right all right so january 1st 2018 now um, if we want next year we want it to be the year after now notice that these steps could be accomplished <laughs> if we just simply said January 1, 2019, but we want, we're going to be working with this date's going to actually change and we won't know whether it's 2018 or not. So we're going to have to use whatever date is in the current date and then do math on it. So to get the January 1st with that new year, we have to calculate what the next year will be. So we're going to do a next year um, Var val variable, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to get the year from this object, from this date object. And we want to get the year and then we can add one. So we do current day dot. And now the operation that we want to do is get full year. So we get the full year. And that in this case is going to return 2018, right? That's the full year out of this date. So now we'll do... Um, math and we'll add one to it and that will be the next year so when it'll take that 2018 and give us that next year now let's test this and make sure we're doing what we expect by simply printing that out down here so i'm just going to replace this down here and we'll see if that's what we get so let's print out next year and see what shows up so we refresh it and there sure enough next year shows up that's the next year after 2018. Okay, now we want to set our date here, this one, January 20th. We want to change it. We do want January 1st, but we want to change the year to this next year. So again, we're going to use these date methods, right? But now we're going to use it on the new year date. And what we're going to use is this set method. So we're going to set full year. And what we're going to set it to is next year. Okay, so we computed what next year was using the current day date. We figured out what the next year was, and then we set the new year, year to that. So now we've got January 1st, uh, 2018. Let's go ahead and print it out so we see what new year is. Again, now that we've changed it, right? Not next year, but let's go ahead and print out new year and see what we get there. Just We're just testing as we go along to make sure we're getting one. Oh my goodness, look what we get for a date here. Tuesday, January 1st, 2019, zero time. Lots of information we get from that. We're not going to display that. But now we know that we do have January 1st, 2019. 
So we have that that's what the value of new year is now. Now we can use subtraction between two dates. So we have current day, which is May 23rd of 2018. And then we have the new year, which is January 1st, 2019. And we can subtract and find out how many days they are. So here we, what the days difference between them is. So here we're going to go days left and we're going to use subtraction. We're going to do new year and subtract. Oop, that was not an equal. That's a plus. We want this to be the assignment operator. And we want to do new year and subtract current day from that and see what we get. And let's go ahead and put the days left in here. So when we subtract them, what do we get when we subtract two dates? If we refresh, look, we get this great big huge number. What this is, is this is the number of milliseconds. Remember, there's a thousand milliseconds in a single second. This is the number of milliseconds from May 23rd, 2018 at this time until January 1st, 2019. And that's what we get is subtraction is the milliseconds. Well, we don't want milliseconds. We want the number of days. So the way you turn um, milliseconds into days is you take the number of milliseconds and you divide it by and here's a whole combination of things, right? We want to divide it by a thousand because we know that that will give us, that will take the milliseconds down to seconds, but that will just tell us how many seconds are left, not days. And then we also want to divide, so we'll multiply this by 60, and that will take seconds and divide it by 60, and that puts it down to minutes. And then we're getting closer, right? But now we also want to divide it by 60 that will take it from minutes to hours. So this will tell us how many hours. And then we want to divide it by 24 because there's 24 hours in a day. So here, we're, the thousand is to get it from milliseconds to second. A 60 gets us from seconds to minutes. Another 60 gets us from minutes to hours. And then 24 gives us from hours to days. So notice what we had divided by all those values to get milliseconds to be days. So let's save this and see what we get. Aha, there we get 222 days plus some. So this is really doing the math and it's 222.43396, right? So it's, it's a 222 days plus a portion of a day. Now we're going to want this to actually say 222 days, and then we'll have to also figure out what we do with this portion of a day. So we've got a bit more work to go.